the crews of CFN and SCN defined the likes of MASH 4077 long before it was immortalized on Broadway, let alone the movies and television. But MASH never had a character quite like Jerry Fry. He was the civilian program director at SCN from about the mid-60s through the 70s. But you could say he was a combination of Colonel Potter, a man with a laid-back air of authority, and Radar O'Reilly, finding not quite always legal ways to improve the station. Jerry had some unique ways of dealing with the gung-ho aspect of military life while he quietly worked out of the box to improve programming. This is Jerry Fry in Thousand Oaks, California. I proudly served as SCN's second program director. I followed Jim Pattison. Um, he came in in September of 1964 and left uh, for Washington, D.C. in September of 1976. If you were in Panama then, you may remember my voicing SCN station breaks. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, this is the voice of information in the Canal Zone, SCN TV channels 8 and 10, and so on and so forth. Those, of course, were all on tape, <laughs> but my boss at uh, Quarry Heights thought I was goofing off and was spending all my time in the announce booth. Can you imagine, though, what life in Panama for young American troops and their families would have been like without SCN? Uh, I don't think it would have been much fun. During my 12 years at SCN, I, I met and worked with hundreds of talented young men and women. Not all of them were the officers in charge, I might add, uh, some of whom I really admired and others I could have done without. We accomplished a lot together in spite of TV reprogram restriction list that was the worst of any in the AFRTS system, prevented us from airing the top shows and movies of the U.S. We brought in two-inch videotape to the Isthmus, uh, and with that we had the ability then to show sports, events, and color for the first time. We produced inventive daily afternoon programs for children, a really great uh, thing for their morale and, and well-being. We played the top hits of the day on radio in spite of threats from the Army controller at one point to take away all of our money if we didn't stop playing all that dirty commie crap that he called it. We pioneered live satellite television within AFRTS by airing the very first live from the States event in 1968. That was the second half of the Army-Navy game. We, we couldn't afford the first half. We kept our audiences informed. That was our main issue, our main mission for being there. Not always an easy task within the military environment, as most of you remember. And we were there for them, however, during times of local unrest, like the 1969 Torrios coup. And, of course, those that came later remember the invasion of Panama. We established Stereo FM service as alternative radio listening choices for the so-called senior audience. Jerry had more to say about that at the final broadcast of SCN. My challenge was to try to take a young upstart uh, network that was full of mostly draftees and mostly very professional broadcasters who had been drafted out of the uh, commercial field who were uh, literally playing radio and television. The first thing twice hit me in the face was lack of equipment and lack of people. We had, I think, around 52 people authorized at the time to run both radio and TV. The television studio was uh, black and white, barely equipped with enough light to illuminate the picture for some very cheap uh, industrial-grade Viticon cameras, which meant the studio was terribly hot. Uh, people had to work under these lights. We could not program everything that came to us in the weekly package. And that was my biggest, turned out to be my biggest challenge of everything, was trying to figure out how to get some decent programming on television when well over 35 to 40 percent of the top-rated programs that we got every week could not be shown since they were on the air on channels 2 and 4 in Panama. It would take over 30 years and the introduction of cable to even partially solve the problem. But there were more successes than failures, along with some innovative and creative thinking. Fry, through his contacts at AFRTS in Los Angeles, had them ship videotapes of sporting events to SCN. Meanwhile, in Panama, SCN engineers tweaked video recorders, enabling them to play back tapes in color. So while AFRTS audiences worldwide saw black and white film versions of sporting events, folks in Panama saw them in color via videotape. 
that also caused the PX to carry color TVs for the first time. Then one day, the president of the West Point Society of Panama visited SCN with an interesting proposal. And they wanted to bring in the Army-Navy game by live satellite. Never happened in the history of AFRTS anywhere in the world. So I naturally grabbed at that thought. That was wonderful. How do we do it? So I made some phone calls and found out it was technically possible. We could do it with microwave shots from the Earth station. One problem, how do we stay for the whole game? They only had enough money for half a game. So we had to make a decision. Do we carry the first half or the second half? <laughs> well, our better senses prevailed and we carried the second half, of course, so we get the end of the game. And that was the first satellite transmission ever in Armed Forces radio and television service. And didn't cost uh, SCN a cent. <laughs>